Today we explore the seven most controversial issues surrounding the contentious practice of targeted killing. Targeted killing involves the intentional killing of specific individuals deemed a threat who are not in custody. The kill order can be carried out by a sniper, an airstrike, or more commonly by an unmanned drone in and outside the battlefield, in times of war, and in times of peace. Critics of targeted killing refer to it as a summary judgment, where the powerful state plays judge, jury, and executioner, an unlawful assassination. Let me tell you about the first controversy concerning targeted killing, something you already know. Imagine a person being targeted because they are said to pose a threat, a real or perceived threat. Is it ever justified to kill them, a lawful state-sanctioned killing? The answer points to yes if the person targeted by the state was killed in self-defence by the state, under Article 51 of the United Nations Charter. You see, Article 51 recognises the inherent right of individual or collective self-defence, if an armed attack occurs. So the big question often overlooked and under-analyzed in any report of a targeted killing are these. Was the state actually acting in lawful self-defense? In other words, was the person a terrorist, an enemy of the state, which would permit the state to conduct that lawfully targeted killing? Or was the state acting as part of colonial domination, vengeance of sorts? In other words, was the person a resistance fighter, a political figure, or a dissident, which would prohibit a targeted killing and therefore equate to an unlawful extrajudicial killing? Now, assuming this controversy over the general right to use force in self-defense is resolved in favor of the state, the next and second controversy is equally more heated in the world today. While some may see this as an inevitable consequence of warfare, consider Israel's practice of what it calls targeted killings in Gaza against the enemy, which stirs a hornet's nest of other controversies. One such controversy revolves around important principles of international humanitarian law, also known as the laws of war, which seeks to limit the effects of armed conflict. Israel makes it clear it defends its actions of carrying out targeted killing in self-defense using precision airstrikes and bombings as a military necessity and a proportionate response to an armed attack and continuing threat it faces and argues all of its actions are in line with the laws of war. Israel only targets the enemy and it is the enemy which it insists is using civilians as human shields. And they say any non-combatant killed in a targeted killing operation is unfortunate collateral damage, tragic but understandable and forgivable in the context of war. Critics, however, completely disagree. They say, considering the large number of civilian deaths from so-called targeted killings, demonstrates a deliberate blurring of the line between non-combatants and combatants, and so violates the life-saving principles of distinction contained in the laws of war, and also calls into question the real purpose behind the state's use of force. It is, however, the third controversy concerning targeted killing, which angers victim states the most, where the targeted killing by another state or group takes place within their own territory, without permission, without notice, and without due process, outside of the battlefield, a violation of their territorial sovereignty and thus international law. Now closely connected is the fourth controversy concerning targeted killing posed in this way as a question, how imminent is the threat posed by the person to justify a kill order, especially when the person lives outside the battlefield in another state and does not appear to be involved in violence or planning violence? One such controversial example of a targeted killing was the US-led drone attack that eliminated Iranian General Qasem Soleimani in January 2020. This action was justified by the US as self-defense, citing an imminent threat posed by Soleimani. However, critics argued that the concept of imminent was stretched too thin in this case, suggesting that the attack was more premeditated punishment than reactive to any threat posed. 
Now, over the years, targeted killings by states, including states mentioned, and other states like France and the UK, has sparked a worldwide debate on the boundaries and definitions of self-defense, especially over the expanding and controversial idea of anticipatory self-defense. The fifth area of controversy concerning targeted killing is a human rights concern. Targeted killings violate human life and dignity and violate due process. Human rights critics say, while international human rights law allows for targeted killing, this should be the last resort, not the first. And targeted killings seem to strike first, not last. This is because from a human rights perspective, all options, all alternatives should be considered before the kill order is made, such as law enforcement actions to arrest and take into custody the suspected enemy, and then to put the suspected enemy on trial, to give the suspected enemy an opportunity to refute allegations made against them, and if found guilty by a court of law, then to proceed to harshly sentence and punish the now convicted enemy. Easier said than done if the state the enemy lives in is unwilling or unable to take law enforcement action, as mentioned, and the subject is planning their next operation. But question marks remain. Were any real attempts made to take law enforcement approach based on international human rights law in dealing with the enemy? Probably secrecy and the lack of accountability being the sixth controversy concerning targeted killing undermines the very idea of its theory and practice among many people. How does a state establish the standard of proof, the evidence, the facts to justify a targeted killing? And how do we know they have met that standard of proof? What is the evidence? What are the facts to answer? Why does the state consider the enemy an enemy? Why does the state consider the enemy an imminent and real threat to them? Why does the state consider it necessary to strike first the enemy and not go through the normal process of their capture and arrest? And exactly how many civilians are acceptable collateral damage to make the kill order of the enemy still worthwhile? The public, it seems, are expected to accept what they are told by public officials as gospel. Finally, the proliferation of targeted killings using trigger-easy unmanned drones the argument goes, is setting a dangerous precedent for states who may not be so anxiously scrutinizing each and every particular case of targeted killing. To conclude, for critics, this proliferation of targeted killing continues to have a short and long-term devastating effect on the civilian population. The case of the CIA covert drone war in Pakistan is something to consider the sheer amount of drones involved in targeted killings. The drone hovers, invisible in the sky, and then strikes without warning. The aftermath is reportedly devastating, not just physically, but also emotionally on a vulnerable civilian population. The impact of such operations on human life, dignity, and well-being raises serious concerns about the respect for basic human rights of those who are clearly not party to the hostilities, but are seemingly still collectively punished. And of course, on the other hand, proponents of kill orders argue the practice is necessary to protect national security and peace and security in the region. So, with targeted killings and war in general, we are left with the final question. Should the right and quality to life of a whole community be sacrificed for the real or perceived safety and security of another community? Or is there another way? In delving into the world of targeted killing, I hope I've ignited some food for thought and debate. But what do you think? Targeted killing a necessary evil or a perilous path towards an escalation of violence? Feel free to comment and thank you for watching.